Now, okay, sons of God, read it. Jude chapter, chapter one, verse six. And the angels, which kept not their first estate. And the angels, <laughs> which kept not their first estate. But left their own habitation. That left their own habitation. He have reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Now, this is what's taught out there for those who don't believe in hell or don't believe what really happened before the flood. They will tell you that the angels, which kept not their first estate, are the Israelites who fell from their lofty positions and are now sitting in darkness in captivity. Okay. That's one of the lowest base, what you would call juvenile teachings on earth. Okay. It does, it's not deep at all. It's, it's actually false doctrine. The Bible says this is angels. We say they're angels. We don't metaphorically explain it off to ignore a judgment or hell. Hmm. Okay, well, if those are not angels, if I can say they're not angels, now I can say that the place that the angels are bound don't exist. So if I can metaphorically change these, an these angels to us, I can say that hell is a condition where we live. <laughs> See, heaven is a condition where we live. But when you look out of the firmament, it tell you in the book of Genesis that when we look out beyond the firmament, which is outside our own zone layer, that that's heaven. <laughs> it tell you that in Genesis, the first chapter, that heaven is when you look outside the firmament. So heaven is not a condition. Hell is not a condition. Heaven is where the most high reside with, with his heavenly angels. And hell is the place in the center of the earth made for judgment. Doesn't matter whether or not you believe it. Eventually, you'll get a chance to see it. Doesn't matter if you believe it. Eventually, you will know it exists. Eventually. So I'm beyond the point of arguing on, on base levels concerning, you know, the reality, the truth concerning scriptures. I'm not, I'm not going to argue with someone or go back and forth with someone. If they look at the word angel and want to make it somewhere, something else. If they're looking at the word hell and want to make it somewhere, something else. You know what they, they're doing? They're excusing the judgment because why? If they deal with the reality that hell exists and that they don't get more chances, they would actually have to repent and change their ways and think twice about getting things right or doing things right on this side, knowing what's coming. Okay. They'll actually have to uh, uh, re really take inventory of how they view life and death. And that's why Jude was talking about this. Why? Because the same arrogance and disobedience that started from the heavenly realm has entered us. Okay? Them fallen angels who, who disobeyed the Most High, all powerful, became proud. And that same spirit has entered us. Where we believe that nothing can, uh, no judgment can come near us, that nothing can happen to us. And out of all people, the Most High is going to make an exception for us because we're special. Read it again, Elder Lawyer. Yes, sir. The book of Jude, verse 6. And the angels which kept not their first estate, come on, but left their own habitation, that left their own habitation, he have reserved in everlasting chains under darkness. Unto the judgment of the great day. Unto the judgment of the great day. Okay. There in hell, the angels were bound who taught man evil before the flood. Okay. They're in chambers 
under the earth suffering a judgment. Okay? That's what hell is. They're bound in prison under the earth until the judgment. All right? Now, we can easily explain off scenarios and situations that the History Channel have question marks behind from week to week. Okay? We don't have to wonder, did gods enter the earth? Did gods do this or did gods do that? We don't have to question what's going on with the Great Pyramids. We know about the Great Pyramids. They're a gate to hell. We know why all of the so-called elite powers go to Stonehenge and go to the pyramids to worship. We know the God they are worshiping who's bound there. We know the gods that's over Islam. We know the gods that's over Persian mythology. We know the gods that's over the Roman Catholic Church. Okay, the Most High revealed it all. The judgment starts with them first because why? They're our senior in creation. They were created before man and disobeyed. So the judgment is not just for us, for following them. The judgment is for them, those sons of God, first. So the Most High want us to examine what happened in the heavens and learn from, and learn from them. When I say learn from them, not their evil ways, Use this as a teaching moment to say, well, okay, this is what God do to those who disobey his command and don't appreciate his love and don't appreciate what he've done for you, which is what gave you an essence of himself. The great I am is who he is. He's all in all. Okay. He gave us life out of himself. And he show you what happens when we don't appreciate that essence, that life, that love he has for us. When we scorn and turn on him, he gave those fallen angels as an example for us. Okay, so if you ignore all that happened, then where's the learning Where's the learning that comes from the things that happened before the flood? Stick with me here. It tell you the angels that sinned, the angels who left their habitation, their first estate, they're where? But left their habitation, he have reserved in everlasting chains under darkness. Under darkness. Unto the judgment of the great day. Unto the judgment of the great day. The great day is the judgment of the Lord. Okay? So we're not the only ones on earth who will be judged. Those that fell before us will be judged. As a matter of fact, their judgment was written before ours. Okay? Let's read it. Let's go back down to Jude. Verse because, 14. Because it tell you Enoch prophesied of these. Go on. Jude verse 14. And Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of these saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. This is quote unquote from the book of Enoch. Okay. Enoch chapter one, verse nine is what Jude, a disciple of Christ is quoting verbatim. So Enoch left a testimony, right? So there's more records outside of chest our 66 books within the Bible and the 14 within the Apocrypha. Our forefathers had all these records and didn't have a Roman Catholic church, the fourth beast, canonizing and as an authority, T 
teaching us, God's people, what we should or should not read. We were supposed to look to the disciples for what was correct. And the book of Enoch that was found in the Crumbrum Caves is 100% correct. Okay. That doesn't matter. You have other people out there who would go in and try to find little things to try to prove it wrong. But here's the problem. You're, you're doing no different than what Muslims do when they grab the Bible, trying to find little parts and try to find contradictions because they don't believe in it. The whole deal is this. When it comes to the book of Enoch, if, if it is correct, then you have to change your doctrine. Okay. The same way a Muslim, if he realized the book, the Bible is correct, he has to change his doctrine and renounce Islam. Okay. So that's what they don't try to go into the book and find contradictions if you don't believe in it, because you're going to find contradictions. That's what you're looking for. Wisdom is known of her children. A man of wisdom or one of wisdom understand wisdom when they read it. OK, with the proper perspective. All right. Now, I'm going to the book of Enoch real quick. Speaking of hell. Mm -hmm. uh, the 54th chapter. One through six. Yes, sir. And I looked and turned another part of the earth, turned to another part of the earth. Now, for those who are fairly new and don't know who, who Enoch was, Enoch was a righteous judge before the flood. OK. When you read Genesis six, where the most High say the sons of gods came down and, and, and dealt with the daughters of men. And brought forth giants or Nephilim during the days of Jared. Well, because of this, the Most High had to make Noah make the ark. Mm 